Hey tutorial heads and welcome back to How to See Make Good. This is How to See Make Good Part 2C. In this one we'll be going over functions and argument passing, which is essential to understand the CMake scripting language. So I've got a basic CMake lists file here. We'll go ahead and make a function call right here. Set property global. The property I'm setting is, I'll just call it foo. And the value I'll pass one, two, three, like that. And what this is going to do is it's going to set a property at global scope called foo. This is different from a variable. We'll talk more about properties later, but it's going to set the global scope, the property foo, to the value one, two, three. I run it. It generated no interesting output. And I'll have a call called get CMake property, say foo value foo, and I'll message status value of foo is foo value, like that. So get CMake property got the foo property from the global scope. That's what this get CMake property is. It's getting from the global scope. It took foo, set the variable foo value to the value of the property, and then I print out what the value is. In the output, we see the value of foo is one semicolon two semicolon three and this is the way that cmake represents lists is using semicolons to separate elements so i've passed to set property several arguments and each word in the argument list is a separate argument so global is an argument property is an argument foo is an argument and one two and three are all distinct arguments it's up to the set property command to decide what each argument means so there's nothing special about the string global right here. I can put it in quotes and the behavior is exactly the same because all of these are string arguments. The keyword property here is acting as a keyword specifier for the argument that comes after it, foo. So in a way, foo is the value of the keyword argument property and that's how we talk about that in CMake scripting. The global behaves more like a enum argument. There's other values that can go here such as directory, which will say set the property foo on the directory. If we run configure again, foo is not found because we didn't have a CMake property foo, we have a directory property. In a similar manner, the first argument to message is also one of these enum arguments to represent the mode it's printing in. Just as the first argument to set property changes the mode of set property, the first argument of message changes the message behavior. One thing very important to understand about CMake argument passing is that of automated list expansion. As we've said, lists in CMake are just semicolon separated lists of values. If I set a variable called my list and I put in the argument one, two, three, I can now pass my list as the argument to the foo property. I'll change this back to global so we can see its output. Run configure and the value didn't change. We've passed one, two, three as the argument here. I'll declare another variable called target. Set target global. Global here isn't a special behavior. This is setting the value of target to the literal string global. This hasn't set a global variable. This hasn't changed any global state. This is a literal string global. No special behavior. Now, if I change the word global here and place target and then configure again, we still get that behavior because CMake has taken the value of target, placed it as the first argument to set property, and the value of target is global. So it is as if we had typed global there to begin with. I'm going to set a directory property by using the directory keyword for our target. I'm going to change the get CMake property to get property target property foo, just like that. And this will behave the same way. The value target expands to directory right here. And in get property, we put directory right here. Now besides just setting a directory property on current source directory, we can explicitly request a directory to set properties on. We do that by specifying the name of the directory after the keyword directory in set property. I'll pass in project source dir to set properties on the project source directory. This isn't going to work though. If I configure, we had two errors at get property and set property. The error says that set property was given an invalid scope, directory, semicolon, then the path to the source directory. What's happened is that the list directory semicolon project source dir is being passed as the first argument to set property. 
but said property doesn't want us to pass anything except one of these scopes they've listed here. What we really want is the word directory followed by the argument which is the directory we want to talk about, project source dir. This is two arguments not one. But when I put the target in there using quotes, it's passing it as the single first argument. I'll take the quotes off of set property and run configure again. Set property no longer complains because we're passing in directory then the project source directory because our expression here dereferencing target variable causes the list that it refers to to expand in place as a list of arguments. Get property still has the error because we have quotes around target and it's trying to pass both of these arguments in one. I'll remove the quotes and we will be back to the correct behavior. What we have is a target variable with a list of two values. The first one is directory, the keyword directory. The second is an actual directory path. When we use it in set property, we pass it by dereferencing it, but not enclosing it in quotes. And the CMake language uses this to expand each element of the list as a separate argument to pass to the function underneath. It is essential to understand this behavior. So how do these functions work? A lot of them are implemented in C++ natively, but we can extend CMake ourselves with our own functions in the CMake script itself. I'll clear this out and let's define a function. To do this, we use the command function. The first argument to function is the name of the function. I'll call it do CMake good. And to terminate the function, as with end if and end while and end for each, we say end function. We do not pass any arguments to end function. To call our function, we simply call it as if it were a regular function, because it pretty much is. I'll run this. Mm, nothing happened, because our function is empty. Let's insert something in there. I'll print a message called the function. Run again. Our message prints. If I insert multiple calls, of course, our message prints for each time we call it. How do we accept arguments to a function? Well, in the function command, after the first argument, which is the function name, each subsequent argument is an argument name. I'll call the first argument first arg. And in the message, I'll say with argument first arg, like that. Now, if we run it, we're going to get an error. Function invoked with incorrect arguments for function named do see make good. The function itself requires at least one argument in each call. So let's pass in some values. I'll run it. We've called the function with arguments 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now just like with regular functions, we can pass multiple arguments. In the case of our custom function, we must pass at least the number of arguments declared in the function. So I can pass more arguments. The first one is bound to first arg. 2, 3, 4 are not bound to any named variables. I'll run the command. It just prints 1. It didn't print any of our remaining arguments. I can give them more argument names to get at those arguments too. Second, third, fourth. And I'll print more messages too. I'll run this script and it prints each argument that it got in the named arguments of the function. Say we don't know how many arguments we want with our function, a variadic function. To do this, functions within function scope receive a special variable called argv and argn. I'll do a simple iteration for each arg in lists argn and for each and inside I'll print the argument. Now when I run it, it prints one, two, three, four in a loop. And if I add more, run it again, it prints those two. It'll keep printing as many arguments as we add. There's actually two special variables defined for functions concerning their arguments. One is argn and the other is argv. If I run it, it looks like it behaves the same and it mostly does. I'll copy this loop and I'll say got argv argument, and this one I'll say got argn argument, and I'll change the iteration to use argn. Looks the same, got argn argument 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then argv argument 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what's the difference? Well, if I add some named arguments to the function and then run it again, argn starts at 4, whereas argv still starts at 1. argn is the variable that represents the arguments which have not been bound to a named argument to the function. argv is for all arguments to the function, whether or not they were bound to a named parameter. So let's talk about scope. In other programming languages, scope is a bit more sensible. In CMake, it's a bit complicated. I'll take off my arguments. And I'll print a message here. Message status value of global var is my global var like that. And I'll take the arguments out of the call. I'll run it. The value of global var is nothing. The global var is not defined. So let's define it. Set my global var meow. 
run configure. The value of the global var is meow. Sounds about right. Find here, expands here. Well, what happens if I move this function, this variable definition down below the function definition? It still prints. This expansion happens very late, only when this function is actually evaluated. And the variable scope of a function is initially copied from the variables within the parent scope. This means that when we call this function, CMake will make a copy of the entire variable scope at the function call and set it as the fun as the scope within the function call. So if, if in the function call, I set my global variable to 12 and then I print the value of the global variable is now, it will say the value of the var is meow. The value of the var is now 12. Now I'll lift the message out of the function call and we'll print. When we enter the function, we'll print the variable value. When we set the value within the function, we'll print the variable value. And then after the function is returned, we'll print the value again. We'll run it. It prints meow. We set it to 12. It prints 12. We return from the function. And the value of the global var is now, after the call, back to meow. CMake has duplicated the variable scope before the call, set it as the variable scope of the function, and then when the function returns, it pops the variable scope off, restoring all the previous values of every variable. This means that setting variables within a function does not affect the parent scope unless you explicitly request it. If I go to the set command, we set the value to 12, and the special trailing argument, parent scope, changes everything. I'll run the configure, the value of the global far, is meow the first time we print. We set 12 in parent scope and then we print it again. It's meow still. But once we've returned, the value of my global var has changed to 12. So we have set my global var to 12 within the parent scope. But this did not change the value of the variable within our own scope, just the scope of our parents. And this is very important to know. So why would you want to use this parent scope parameter? Well, it's the only way to easily return values to your caller. Let's create a function that can actually be useful. Function, I'll call it increment, and my named argument will be var end function. I'll print a message, value before increment is var. And now let's set the value to 14. I'll call increment on not 14, but the word value itself. So we are passing in the literal string value to increment, and that string, it's as if we had typed value right there like that and what's going to happen is this is not going to actually behave what you expect it to i'll run the configure value before incrementing is value well it hasn't dereferenced value to become 14. we have var which is a variable name we need to dereference it again we dereference var once to get the word value we dereference the word value to get 14. and there it is so let's do some math. Math expert new value is double dereference var plus one. Message status value after increment is new value. So we're going to set the local variable new value to the value of the variable named by var plus one. Run it. 14 becomes 15. Now we've done this increment. Can we send it back to the caller? Well, we can. If we set, and here's the magic, the name of the variable which has been bound to var is what we'll pass as the set. We're going to set the value of the variable named by var to the value of new value and we'll put it in the parent scope. I'll take these messages out. I'll say message status final value is value. Run the configure. The final value is 15. We can call increment several times and the final value is now 21 because each time we pass over increment, we increment the value of the variable named by the first argument. Now we haven't dereferenced value in any of these calls, but within the function, this double dereference is dereferencing the argument value. This is how CMake knows where to store your arguments. For example, I'll define a function called sum, I'll store the value in value, and I'll sum three and five. I want this sum function to add three and five and store it in value. So I'll make function sum a, b, and function. Do some basic math. I'll store the value in ret. I'll take the value of a plus b, and then I set, oh, I need an argument. I'll call it out. I'll set out to be ret in the parent scope. So out is the name of a variable that we're going to set in the parent scope. 
We dereference that to get the name in the first parameter to set. We set it in the parent scope to the value of ret. And then our value will be the sum. Take these increments out. I'll run it. And the value is 8. 3, 5, stored into value, is 8. So this video has already run a little long. I was going to talk about CMake parse arguments, which is one of the most powerful CMake commands, but I think that deserves its own video, so we'll see that one in the next one. As always, check the video description for any errata, addendums, extra information, or important links. And until next time, keep CMake in good.